and it is Miro Šedivý, and he's not a newcomer to PyCon at all, PyCon Slovakia. He had a lot of really, really cool, cool talks related to internalization, internationalization, that's what a, what a word, and um, things like, do you remember the talk about time zones? Yeah. That's pretty awesome, right? I mean, that, uh, probably out of all the talks from PyCon Slovakia that I share with my friends, that is the number one. And, um, you know, cool stuff, like there was, we had a winter time uh, in, in Czechoslovakia a long time ago, a lot of really cool things. If you have not seen that talk, do check it out. It's really, really good. And there was another one about keyboards, I believe, right? And today, Miro is going to be talking about names. So let's give him a big warm welcome. Thank you, Anna. Let me introduce first. So my name is Miroslav. Can you please fix if there is some problem with the cable or microphone? I am not sure. No, no, that's still wrong. No, that's still wrong. We are, can you like fix it or I don't know, camera or no, no. No, still wrong, still wrong. Can you do one job correctly, please? No, no, it's fine. So my name is Miroslav Šedivý and what I see quite often that my name is invalid. So. If, uh, well, we are now in the Slovak Czech region where people usually know how to read uh, Miroslav Šedivý, how to pronounce it. Šedivý is like a normal word that you can find in a dictionary and it means that someone who is gray-haired, so you can describe a person quite well with that. This is how you can write it uh, using international phonetic alphabet. You can even spell it using military alphabet. So like uh, Schweik Echo, Delta, India, Victor, and a long Yankee. <laughs> so this is how I can spell my last name. And if you are using Slovak Czech keyboard uh, layout, you can directly type it on, type on it. But of course, you don't want to program in Python using Czech or Slovak keyboard layout. Uh, you want to use the standard US keyboard layout. And in that case, I totally recommend you to install or set up a Compose key on your keyboard, and then you can type my name also like this. So it's easy, like, look, on my name page, they did it. It's not so complicated to type the name. Even here, let's see a book, random book from Aurelie, Fluent Python, the latest one uh, covering Python 3.10. Look, they printed it correctly. Disclaimer, I was one of the tech uh, reviewers of this book. Read this several times, and now I would like to offer it to someone. So let's say that the one who asks the coolest question, what is the coolest question? Well, Anna is going to decide, uh, will get this copy at the end of my talk. So, and what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about two things. First, about names and strings in general in Python, and about the names on web forms in databases. So how to work with names of people. In uh, Python 3, fortunately, we have now two types uh, for working with something like strings. So there are strings where every character is one of those over one million code points, and it allows you to type in most alphabets of the world and uh, use plenty of other characters. And this is something that is used in the working memory. So if you are working really with text, uh, you should use strings. And there are bytes, the old good bytes, where you have 256 combinations per byte and that you use when you are writing to files on disk or sending something over network. And this should be used also only there. In Python 2, there was no real distinction between these two. And Python 3, it is beautiful. It doesn't work if you interchange the, them. You have to convert between them properly. And now we are going to see how we are go going to convert between them. If your name is Chuck Norris, of course, you don't convert the name. The name converts you, or vice versa. <laughs> On the left side, uh, it is a string. And with dot .encode, uh, with the default uh, encoding uh, UTF-8, uh, it will be encoded into the same number of uh, bytes. Uh, and the other way around, with decode of bytes, uh, you get uh, the right uh, string. Um, well, 12 uh, characters, 12 bytes. That's simple. But if your last name is Müller, then, and you encode it, then from six uh, uh, German letters, you will receive seven bytes because the U umlaut uh, has to be encoded using two, uh, two bytes uh, in uh, UTF-8. Uh, if you have some Chinese, this is not a name, this is Ni Hao, so hello in Chinese, uh, then you uh, need even more uh, bytes. But well, this is UTF-8, and in, in the encoding takes care of itself, so you don't have to like count them or do some, anything with them. You just encode, and the stuff works. Uh, well, the default uh, encoding in Python is uh, UTF-8, but uh, there are also other encodings, so the old ASCII, 
Again, if you are Chuck Norris, then in ASCII it works. In Müller, ASCII wouldn't work because this U umlaut is not uh, included in standard ASCII. It is included, for example, in Latin 1, where the 256 uh, characters are mapped uh, to individual, individual bytes. So with Latin 1, you can have uh, six uh, characters, uh, six letters uh, as a string, uh, encoded to six uh, uh, bytes, uh, uh, knowing that it is uh, the encoding of uh, Latin one. You have to know it. You, it is implicit. It is not described in the text. So if you are storing it somewhere, you have to remember that when decoding, you are you are using Latin one. For my last name, which is uh, from Czechoslovakia, uh, in Czech, Slovak, and some other Central European languages, uh, Latin 2 was used that mapped uh, characters from, or letters from these uh, alphabets uh, to the bytes. And well, using Latin 2, I can uh, encode my uh, last name into six uh, uh, bytes. But well, let's take some random big company that sells packages uh, or sell, sends packages around the world. And sometimes in Germany, I received packages like this. Where does the question mark come from? Because when I type uh, my last name or my name uh, on their online form, uh, it was printed correctly. But when it came to me, it looked like this. Well, if my last name is encoded using Latin 2, then it would work and it would be interpreted probably correctly. The problem is that this company is based in Germany and German uses Latin 1. And if you try to encode my last name using Latin 1, you will get an exception. But the thing that arrived at my home was a package. I didn't receive an exception, I received a package. <laughs> so they probably did some round, some workaround for that. And actually, if in Python uh, you tell that you want to encode, for example, in Latin 1, and some characters cannot be encoded in Latin 1 because they are not mapped there, and you say that uh, you want all the errors to be replaced, and automatically it replaces such characters like uh, with a question mark, and this is probably where it comes from. So this company probably uses Python with such a uh, workaround. But you can do even more cool stuff if you don't like the question marks, because like question mark is a question mark, and sometimes you want to replace uh, such characters with something different. And uh, you can do it, for example, with such a method where you register the error that if there is a, something to replace, then you want to use the replace randomly function and replace it randomly with some digit, for example, and then it can look like this. Well, this is a company that uh, runs uh, those beautiful large trains that cross Germany and then go even to Austria and to some other countries. And this is how their post looked like. Uh, this was on my um, customer card from the same company that was uh, glued into the same envelope. And this was the letter. So actually, the envelope, the letter, and the card use completely different uh, encodings. Um, and still, well, sometimes there are people asking me on the train, uh, well, it doesn't uh, match your ID card, but well, they let me go. This is another company that uh, keeps uh, those big uh, planes uh, over the, uh, in the air. Uh, they can do that, but they cannot work with uh, names. So they tell me, you can only enter letters in, the, in your last name. Uh, well, my last name consists of letters exclusively. Uh, how can you know what is a letter? In uh, Python 3, we can, use, we can define variables like this. So you shouldn't do that, but uh, you can define a variable that consists of Unicode characters. So shadev is a valid variable name in Python 3. Uh, but 1, 2, 3 is not a valid variable name. How does Python know what is a letter, what is not a letter? If you uh, import Unicode data from the standard library, uh, there is uh, uh, the functions, uh, the methods of Unicode data that show you the category and the name of the character. And with this uh, script, you see in the second column, you see this LL, LU, and so on. And it tells me that A, lowercase a, is a letter lowercase. Another LU means letter uppercase. And then, for example, for PO, that's like some punctuation. SO are some special symbols. A space uh, is a category of ZS, ZS. Which means that if you, uh, a character, Unicode character is, belongs to the category of LL or LU, it is considered a letter and therefore can be a part of a variable. And this is how you can distinguish whether something that you don't know, that maybe some, ex some exotic alphabet that you don't know, whether it is a letter or number or digit or any sign or whatever. So this, everything is stored uh, in, in the Unicode database uh, directly in Python. And these are all the 
uh, uh, categories of uh, characters. So you see like every character belongs uh, somewhere. And if it doesn't belong somewhere, it belongs to other symbol probably. Um, even if you open the application like character map, then it shows you all the information about to which category it belongs, uh, what is the official name. And for example here, the Latin capital letter S with Karen, it is something that you can use directly in your Python code. If you want to define it, uh, you can do backslash uh, uppercase N and in curly braces write the name of the character and it will be interpreted as such uh, in your code. So your code can be kept ASCII and still you can use some special characters. There is case folding, which means converting between uppercase and lowercase, which works usually in Latin alphabet. So upper of the left part converts to uppercase, uh, lowercase uh, the other way around. There are some exceptions. So for example, the German Schaff SS, uh, lowercase. There is also an uppercase version that was added later. So now the converting uh, methods uh, convert lowercase Schaff SS to SS. But the other way around, if you take the uppercase uh, shaft SS, then you can convert it to lowercase. So there are some asymmetries. And there is also one problem that we, we Europeans, cost to one Europe, European Asian, Asian uh, nation of Turks. There is one letter in alphabet that we broke for them. And that letter is I. Because, well, we understand that the lowercase I with dot if I turn it into uppercase, it will be uppercase I without a dot. But in a Turkish alphabet, these are two different letters. So with dot, it is E, and without dot, it is E. So it can even, there are words in Turkish, like pairs of words that when converted wrongly, that they can mean something offensive, maybe. So if you work with Turkish text, you shouldn't like convert uh, lowercase, uppercase. Uh, you should import international components for Unicode um, library and then uh, uh, use uh, the, uh, the converting that is for locale, for the Turkish locale. Normalizing of uh, words uh, means that, uh, for example, these three letters word Zeus can be written as, as three words, as three letters, but also as four characters. So you see in the second case, uh, there is U, normal U, uh, lowercase U, uh, and then comes combining the arrays. So you have like two dots uh, that is combining that comes after the word, uh, after the character, and adds it to it. You see in the second block, uh, in the line two, uh, this combining the arrays, it is a little bit pushed to the left because Actually, it has no width. That's why when it prints, it doesn't print as a width, as a character. It is like put there um, and combined with the previous character. So also, if you work with uh, text, you should like normalize and check whether these two characters or two strings are identical. And with that, you can do like wonderful stuff. This is a Stack Overflow answer to the question whether you can parse uh, HTML with regex. And what you see at the bottom, these are like characters with plenty of combining. The arrays is combining any combining characters. Alphabetic sorting uh, in Python, well, you can always use sorted, but that's sorted according to uh, Unicode uh, code point, and that's wrong because, well, first comes ASCII, then some Latin 1, Latin 2, sharp as uppercase comes at the end. So this is, this is maybe the reason why when I find myself with my last name in some lists, I'm usually totally at the beginning or completely at the end because they come sh sort sh according to something. If you are using a locale, uh, then you can sort according to some rules. So this is, for example, the German rule. Uh, the Swedish rule is different because a umlaut uh, is put at the end of alphabet in other uh, alphabets uh, or in other languages, it is put somewhere else. The problem of locale is that it changes the locale of the process. So if you have some big system and you just in one, somewhere you just change this locale, then you change it for the whole library or whole web server. That's probably not what you want. Um, there are some languages where the sorting is uh, again different. For example, in Hungarian, Cipesh uh, CS uh, is CH and it is like after C, so Cipesh comes after Zwickli. In Czech and Slovak, well, you know, we have CH, CH and so on, and we have also CH, H, that is put between H and I. So this may be sometimes difficult to sort correctly. In French, any French speakers here? Uh, in French, they sort alphabetically according to ASCII, and then they go from the end of, of, from the last syllable, whether it has accent or not, and the previous syllable and previous. So this is how you sort alphabetically, cot, cot, cote, and cote. Well, as I told you, uh, local is connected to the process, so it is good for small scripts or if you know that you are working system-wide, but uh, for some library changing the locale is an uh, ugly thing. So I would uh, recommend to use ICU and then object-oriented create the 
collator that uh, takes care of that. Another possibility is PI UCA, uh, but you see there is nothing about the language. It has simply some internal nice uh, ordering uh, stuff for Unicode, but uh, it is gen universal for all languages and therefore it doesn't uh, work uh, uh, for specific language. So sorting for Swedish, Czech, Slovak, and uh, German would be the same. This is probably not what you want. Regular expressions, well, if you want to use them, you have one problem. If you use them really, then you have more problems. If I want to extract a München from this string, I can do this, but then it will extract only something that looks like ASCII characters, so M and HEN, but I want München. So I can do backslash W, but in that case, it takes also the digital, the, like digits, that's not what I want, but if I use a third-party library, regex, which works like the standard RE, but has some extra uh, functionality, then you can use backslash P, and then uppercase L, which is the category of the character. You have seen the categories of Unicode characters. Uppercase L means like it is a letter, so I want to extract all letters. Well, it was the part about Python, but now let's turn to the names. So who here fits into this form? who can write their first name and last name. Okay, some of you. Anyone with middle names? Okay, we have some middle names. Any patronym, metronymic, so this is like more the Spanish, yes. We have last name, first name, so Hungarian and Eastern uh, Asian languages. We have also cases like in Iceland, uh, if someone is Sigur and his father was Johansson, his name is Sigur Johansson, but it is not Mr. Johansson, he's Mr. Sigur Johansson or only Sigur. Johansson is not a last name. Uh, any popes, kings here? <laughs> no. And maybe people who have just one name, full name, whatever. And we have, of course, plenty of title uh, abbreviations and uh, doctor titles where that changes your name, but sometimes you don't know wh whether to put it into your last name, first name, or wherever. So, what I think my suggestion is we should use in forms, we should use one line for full name, where you write your full name as is, and maybe something like we should call you. So in my case, full name is Miroslav Šedivý, and how should we call you Miro? Well, and there are people who just write, there are some exceptions for, they present themselves, okay, this is how I write my name into forms. So, uh, but well, even if I give this talk, maybe many online services won't change, so this is again, some online form in Germany. Please enter characters from the European character set only. Well, Shedivi is a European name. <laughs> please enter a full valid name. My name is full and my name is valid. <laughs> so please don't assume anything. Don't put random limit, limit on the length of the name. Eh? So like Pippi Langstrumpf, uh, they had a long name. There was one German minister whose name was even longer. Uh, don't use stop words, because if it is offensive in your language, it can be a completely legal word in some other language, so don't use them. Family members don't have necessarily the fam same family name, so in Czech Slovak, well, all male members of my family are Šedivi, female members are Šediva. Well, this looks uh, different, and it's like the like male and female form of uh, the word grey-haired. There are different transcriptions from non-Latin alphabet, so for example from Cyrillic, you have plenty of different ways of writing it. On the other way around, a few years ago, I went to uh, Russia twice, and in my passport I had two visa, and in both of them my last name was transcribed differently into Cyrillic. And, of course, Chinese and some other alphabets. Uh, men, can they change their family names too? So if you use something like maiden name or ne, well, this is for females, but for males it can be different. Uh, one letter name is probably not an initial, so Benoit B. Mandelbro, this B doesn't mean anything. And, well, I think that all printable count points are most probably fine. There are cases of people who, well, their name is null and they just escape all computer systems. Uh, someone, uh, someone put um, a car plate null in hope that they will escape from the system, but actually at the end all uh, speed uh, camera images that were not attributable to any number were attributed to him. And if your database has problem with uh, little Bobby, then please see me after the talk. With the names are not only names of people, they are names of streets, cities. So which one, which is probably the most widespread, most popular name of a uh, street in Germany? Einbahnstraße, which means one-way street. <laughs> so if you park your car and you remember it was in the Einbahnstraße, you will find it again. 
Uh, on the other hand, in some American lists of uh, company names or addresses uh, from Germany, uh, I see this. Uh, so they interpret with OCR that Hauptstrasse is actually Hauptstrabe. So if you search online for Hauptstrabe, you will find plenty of uh, pages. And there are also names uh, of places that may be too short, so all somewhere in the north, uh, y, well, this is somewhere in France. Uh, well, if it is too short, well, it can be too short, so you shouldn't like put something like this, that what is your mother's maiden name, and it should be at least six characters. Doesn't work always. <laughs> now I will need your hand, uh, help. Uh, who can read this name? Let's do it together. So this is somewhere in Wales. <laughs> There are some Polish names, well, this is... Grzegorz Brzęcis Ciekiewicz, Chrzącierze Woszice Powiat Wenkowody, is his birthplace. Uh, if you search for on uh, YouTube uh, for this video sequence, it's like one and a half minute. Just type it quickly, Grzegorz Brzęcis Ciekiewicz. Um, and this is from a movie, How I Unleashed World War II, uh, from a Polish movie from the 70s. In this movie, 10 languages are spoken without subtitles. And it's really like, very nice movie for people who enjoy listening to different languages. And sometimes you even don't need to write an address. So there is, for example, some not address in Iceland. <laughs> and it works. It means that you are not, you shouldn't validate names and addresses. It is not your job. If someone, if you're, the only thing that you need an address for is like print it on an envelope and make the post delivery to someone, it is the job of the post, not your job. So just take it as is, copy it, that's fine. Memory is cheap these days, so you can just take any amount of data and just print it. Uh, probably you have seen already this uh, blog post, uh, falsehoods programmers believe about names. I'm not going to read it. Imagine this is like 40, 50 different tips or falsehoods that people believe that they should work if you read through them and you imagine that your application probably deals with the names wrongly. But look at the URL, 2010. This is 12 years ago, and this is a very popular post. I see that people tweet about it uh, or discuss it, uh, link to it quite often. And still, I had a good reason to do this. I created a Twitter account. Your name is invalid. Well, your name is valid because Twitter has character limit on the name of the login. So it, your name is invalid was too long, so I took your name is valid. And 1,600 tweets, and I am only retweeting uh, screenshots of failed forms of people who just fr frustrated, they write like, hey, why can't I write my name? Because some airlines, they say that your name, I, we cannot take your name, you have to write, uh, try it again. Well, are you going to try again to write your name because it has to be exactly like on the, your document ID? Uh, because they want it to be on the document ID, but at the same time, it cannot contain some characters, some spaces, uh, there is a limit on length, so what should you do? And this is a Twitter account that has feed it, and even like that post, uh, blog post about falsehoods uh, is 12 years old. I still have plenty of material to tweet around about. So your name is valid. Well, what you should do, you should respect your user's name. Uh, if you work with uh, the local, then don't break it, uh, import ICU. Uh, hamburger principle, so uh, convert from bytes to string as soon as possible, and then from strings to bytes as late as possible. Well, UTFK, it is cool, Python 3 is cool, be cool too. If you tell your name, your name is invalid, that's not cool, and you are going to land on the Twitter um, account, and be nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mito. So let's go to the questions. Uh, the first one that was that was asked, uh, what about changing your surname to, to gray-haired? Wouldn't it be easier? No. no. Imagine the amount of documents that I would have to change. No. <laughs> <laughs> How many languages do you know? I have read about a few dozens or hundreds. Read about, but well. It is like with programming languages. How many programming languages do you know to some extent? So at some point, you just stop counting them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, can you explain how this works, whatever this is? Well, this is, these are the combining uh, uh, characters that I uh, showed uh, about. So it is like a character and then you put plenty of combining characters after it and then it shows like this. 
But it's nice that uh, Slido uh, supports it. <laughs> How did you learn to present and prepare for these types of talks? Uh, in presenting and preparing and presenting such talks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also an invitation to all the first-time speakers. <laughs> uh, there are lightning talks, so please subscribe. It is like how I started, like really like five years ago, a good friend of mine, he told me, we were discussing some stuff, and he told me, well, give, why, why don't you give a lightning talk about it? It was a Europe in 2017. And I thought, oh, <laughs> imposter seat, never mind, I don't want to. And there was this uh, table where I had to write my name, so I wrote it, and I had 24 hours to prepare it, and that's how it started. <laughs> and remember to, to pick your favorite. Favorite question, okay? Um, is Austrian police among those institu institutions which cannot process your name correctly? If yes, have you ever paid fine for overspeeding? Uh, these are two completely unconnected questions. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, Austrian institutions don't have problem with that. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> What's bad with a name? Shady V, you know, question mark, Eddie V, better than uh, the name of, the, uh, of, of uh, Elon Musk's daughter, which is spelled over there. Uh, well, I don't want to have a different last name than my father. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most recommended Python library to work with graphene clusters as opposed to code points correctly? That's a good question. I have no idea what we are talking about. See me after the talk, please. I would like to learn about that. What collation a locale to use when a user form uh, .de, so that, that would be the German UTF-8, browsing from a Slovakian IP with a browser set to the English US locale UTF-8, uh, accesses a Turkish site? <laughs> that must be some hacker. <laughs> so blacklist that person. Blacklist, yeah. <laughs> How do you prepare for this kind of talk? Okay, we just, we just had that. Well, I, from time to time I get some posts, I just take a picture of that, uh, I take pictures of screenshots of my, of my online forums, uh, so there is a plenty of material, only for me and, well, the Twitter account, I'm not allowed actually to use the pictures from the Twitter account, but uh, there must be hundreds, hundreds of cases and coming every day. And thank you for collecting them, by the way. It's very nice, even if you have some really interesting, weir weird, quirky hobby, it's really nice if you collect the material and share it in some way. So, so you, I think this if is you, super creative. I, this is like a snowball. So there are people who already follow my account. Some people, when I found, find their tweet and I retweet it, they see it and they start following my account because their name is like uh, a victim. Uh, and uh, many people, uh, when they see some other case, uh, they just comment it uh, and ping uh, your name is valid. So that's why how I see it and I retweet it. So I'm very thankful for that. So if you see anything, just ping uh, or CC your name is valid and uh, I will retweet it happily. It has to be a screenshot, like written stories is something that I don't retweet, but screenshots, I'm happy about it. What would you recommend for standardization of character inputs? Should, we, should it always be ASCII-based character values as it always as it is always supported. We have 2022. When was UTF-8? Uh, found, not founded, by, I mean like standardized. Use UTF-8. Can a name contain emoji? Should it? What about zero width joiner? Non-breaking white space? Box drawing character? Where would you draw the line? So it's kind of like- Nice thing is that it's not my job. <laughs> I have to, I have to take, uh, what comes in, of course, uh, like database SQL injection, and so of, co of course, this is my job actually to make it correctly, but then what it contains is not my job, so I accept. These problems come from, uh, uh, from form and input validation requirements. How would you recommend to do the validation? Names of people cannot be invalid. You cannot validate them. <laughs> okay. And this would be the last one. Whoever would like to read that aloud, please. <laughs> it means something. There is some hidden meaning. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, thank you so much, Miro. Thank you. <laughs> well, if you agree, I like that uh, hacking uh, attempt uh, to go like through whole Europe with the Turkish website. So is the person who asked it here? 
Not all raise hands, please. Only one person, yeah? <laughs> who, who asked that question about uh, how would you like validate uh, if there is someone from DE and uh, Turkish website and so oh, on? That's very easy. The name was anonymous, as it was written there, right? Ah, okay, that's anonymous. <laughs> so anonymous, book for you. Yeah, but really, like, who, who asked that question? Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomer. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládať tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.